Good day, folks. It's uh, Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. Today we are going to look at, actually, we're going to revisit CryPing. I did a video, uh, I think it was five years ago, on this, and I've been using it since then, and I want to do an updated video with a couple of extra tips and tricks, and I'll also show you more Wireshark stuff on how I find out how the application works, called baselining or calibrating your tools. And I also want to teach you uh, the odd thing within the Windows command prompt as well. So we'll start with the basics. At this command prompt, you can see it's got my full path. And sometimes you don't want to see all that, right? Because the path could be quite long. And that's a good old prop command for the people who never used that before. And if I just want the greater than sign, it's dollar sign capital G, enter. And now I've got a greater than sign. A CLS will clear my screen. And that's one of the things people ask me is how do you change your prompt? That's quite simply how I do that. If you just Google the command line prompt command, you'll see all the various things you can do like date, time, greater than sign, all that kind of stuff. You could even put your own prompt there, right? Which is entirely up to your preference. All right, let's move on to the next thing. If I just type cry ping, enter, it will show you all the things you can do. So I want to walk through um, a couple of options, but I'm going to back that up with some Wireshark, Wireshark stuff. <laughs> There's a mouthful. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cry ping 10.44.10.1. That's my router. I want to capture that in Wireshark. What I don't want to do is just hit start because that'll get everything. I want to do a filter. So host space 10.44.10.1. And you'll see it'll go from pink to uh, green. If I did that right, let me just do this again. And I'm going to pick my adapter. Yeah, that's that's what I did wrong. I didn't pick my adapter first. Host 1044. Yeah, there you go. All the ugly typos you get to see as well. And you can see it's green now. And I'm picking my killer Ethernet adapter. And I'm just going to double click that off you go it's capturing now only from that host 1044 10.1 so I can go back to my command prompt press enter and you'll see the pings are obviously working right and if I come over here I can see ping request reply request reply that sort of thing I just want to show you a, a very interesting little uh, additional thing I like to do I'm gonna just stop my capture here for a moment if you take a look there's my ping uh, reply I'm going to change my time display format seconds since previously displayed packet and that's my delta time so there's my request there's my reply and that took less than a millisecond less than a millisecond right that's that's the time stamp and if you take a look here you'll see that this is also uh, giving us the response time and it's saying one millisecond whereas the first reply was less than a millisecond. So why? That could be a rounding thing. That could also be because CryPing is measuring it from the application layer and Wireshark is measuring it lower down the stack as well. So the people who want to compare the time differences between a packet capture versus the application, you always get this. There's nothing wrong with CryPing. It's just the behavior of an application measurement tool versus a packet measurement tool. All right. So I thought I would just cover that because I got a few questions on that. So that was a simple um, ping using ICMP. So big deal. Well, we're going to we're going to ramp it up a bit. The next one we're going to do is a cry ping using the HTTP option uh, to 10.1. So I'm going to start my capture again over here. I don't want to save it. And if you pay attention at the top, Wireshark says capturing from killer host 1044 10.1. So my capture filter is still in effect. And because I'm going to the same host, it's going to work. And if you take a look, you can see this one says permanently moved, right? I'm sorry, moved permanently, 301. And traditionally, when things work, you'll see a 200. So this is actually giving us the response as well. If I go back to my trace, I'm going to hit stop. You can see what it does. It sends a sin synac on port 80, and then it sends this head command, right? Because if you're familiar with HTTP, there's things like head, get, post that sort of thing right and this is using a head command it's more like a status more than anything and you can see the moved permanently here as well so that's how it's doing that under the covers so to speak uh, be careful uh, when you do these kinds of tests because depending on the server you'll get different responses and just make sure if you are using a capture filter you change that so I'm gonna go back to my capture options and I'm gonna change this to a different server 10.2 this time enter and I'm going to change my command to 10.2 and 
and off we go to the races and this time it's 200 see so it works right and that's obviously how it's getting that type of information the next thing you might want to do is when you are actually um, doing these commands the default is more than one command right you might only want one for example because there's no sense in asking it that many times unless that's what you're troubleshooting so it supports the dash n1 and that way it only does it once and that way obviously you don't bother it as many times if you actually want to see what comes back there's a dash v as in verbose and it will actually show you what's coming back as well um, and then that way you don't have to look at it from the protocol analyzer point of view you've got it right on your screen the next thing you might want to do is good old cry ping and dash pop three space and then a pop three server I'll use mine one and one dot com and it'll do that now here's let's go back to Wireshark for just one moment because we're going to do a different capture to a different host we have to change our filter so people ask me how do you figure out the IP of that host well you don't need to host space pop dot one and one dot com see that it'll do the name resolution for you uh, this works pretty good in some environments where you have a lot of different names and different load balancing where it may go to a different host then this may cause a little bit of a glitch but in most cases this works pretty good and you can see off it goes to the races it says uh, okay positive so on and so on and so on if I come back over here I'll stop this for a moment you can see sin sin ac it's using 110 port 110 and then obviously there's my banner that came back and then we politely close the connection so that's the other thing about this, these tools that you might want to look out for when it's done how does it close the connection does it even close the connection does it just leave it open that sort of thing this is very polite and proper it's actually saying fin finished right I'm finished see you later so on and so on and so on uh, look out for things like resets because that's not polite and that's kind of rude you want this thing to finish properly and let's move on to the next one so that's with pop you can do the same thing with SMTP it has the uh, dash here let me just bring that up cry ping dash SMTP space SMTP and again I'll use mine one and one dot com enter and off you go to the races uh, I'm I need you to understand that when you do these tests it's using default port numbers and all that so if you have different port numbers you have to adjust accordingly and so on and so on and so on now let's move on to port numbers so if I want to do for example I'm gonna stop this start a brand new capture I'm going to hit that server that I have local 1044.10.1 and off we go and I'm gonna do a cry ping 10.44 10.1 dash p for a port number and I'll pick port 80 for example go so now it's just going to check port 80 this has nothing to do with HTTP this is a simple port check and if you take a look at the trace file now you will just see a sin a port 80 synac port 80 right so sin synac ac the session is set up and then it immediately sends a fin and shuts it down accordingly which is kind of nice again it's very polite very proper you you don't see any pop or SMTP or HTTP or application level stuff because this is just checking a port so if you want to check just a port number like even VNC right 5900 for example is the default you can do that I'm going to intentionally change this to port 1001 I'm going to start a brand new capture and I'm going to hit enter I want to show you what happens so you can see here it says I want to do a connection 801 and the device says no reset reset another way of thinking of a reset it's a punch in the face so you walk up to him with your hand outstretched good morning how are you whack right in the forehead and then you just constantly you know you'll retry 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 depending on your operating system it could be five times seven times three times and then you'll give up on it and you can see this says fail to connect so it's important to see what kind of messages you get when it does not work as well as when it does work another neat thing you may want to add to this I'm going to do that port 80 thing again dash D as in date enter and now you can see you get an additional piece of information the date and the time 
which is really cool. So if you're writing this to a file, you have this in a script, and you want to see the time, well, there you go. Because times might uh, influence the response time. So you might find at 3 a.m. during the backups, the response time go up. Or at 10 a.m., everybody's in at work and they're doing stuff, and the response time goes up. So the time is actually quite important to have in your reports. If you wanted to space out the interval a little bit more than the default, dash R will do that. So I want to do the same test, and this time I'm going to do a dash R space 5. So it's going to, in this case, check port 80. It's going to wait 5 seconds, and then it'll do it again. And if you look at the time, it says 10.44.08, 13, 18, the next one will be 23, hopefully. And there you go. So that's what it's doing. So now we've spaced it out a little bit more because you might not want it as often as it does by default. And that's the dash R5. We've already looked at the dash N when we want to do it just once so we don't bother it. In this case, you might want to spread this out every 5 seconds for 50 seconds. That would give us 10 port checks. And that's what the dash N would do there as well. Uh, the other thing I noticed about the tool, uh, it does not support UDP port checks. So it's a TCP or ICMP tool. And on the application side, we've got POP, we've got SMTP. We've also got HTTP. It also does uh, NNTP. That's the news servers, right? Not NTP as a network time protocol. It's the news protocol. So you can actually play with this quite a bit, and you can get all sorts of cool information right from the command prompt. So if you can't ping, just cry ping. Have a good day. Bye for now.